LDL numbers, uh, if they're high, is that really bad? Watch this. Our next caller is Sean from Minnesota. Sean, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Thank you, Sal. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, so uh, I have a question about LDL cholesterol. And um, just to give a little bit of a background, um, so I'm someone who, uh, I'm a pretty big guy. I work out a lot to the point where I almost overtrain. Um, I'm about six foot two, 200 pounds. Uh, I've worked out basically every day since high school, so about 15 years now. And um, because of that, I, I eat a lot of calories. I mean, I eat around 4,000 calories a day just to maintain weight. Um, I've also determined that um, eggs are probably the main source of protein that works best for my digestive system. And in about May of 2021, I started tracking my macros to try to put on some more muscle. Um, and it's worked. I put on probably about five pounds of muscle. I have not increased my waist circum circumference. Um, the problem is my LDL cholesterol. So I had labs drawn in July of 2021. And my LDL cholesterol was very good. It was 78 milligrams per deciliter, which is well under the 100, but they recommend you, you stay under. Then after that, I increased where I was eating a lot of eggs, probably about eight eggs per day with yolks on average and a little bit more red meat throughout the rest of 2021. I had labs drawn again in December and my LDL was 146, but it shot up. It was pretty high. And then of course, after that, I said, okay, you know, I need to go more either you know, plant-based, whatever. Um, and I guess I heard something, um, I believe Sal, you said in the episode recently about the eight worst people to take diet advice from. You mentioned something, I think I'm paraphrasing here about how uh, LDL cholesterol, high LDL cholesterol alone is not necessarily, you know, that much of a, a big deal if you don't have other risk factors. And so I'm wondering if you can elaborate on that a little bit and kind of what your take is on my my situation. Yeah, sure, Sean. So first off, I want to say, obviously, I'm not a doctor um, and this is not mm -hmm. my field of expertise. So my expertise is in fitness. So what I'm going to comment on now is coming from somebody who's a fitness expert, um, not a doctor. Okay. So I'm not an expert mm -hmm. in this. But there's a, there's a context that is typically looked at when you're assessing risk. LDL is part of that picture, but you have LDL, HDL ratio. You have, your, um, you have other lipids that they're looking at in your blood, your blood sugar, um, body weight. And then LDL can also be broken up into different types of LDL. Some mm -hmm. are more damaging. Others, uh, now they're talking about being more protective. The total LDL number can also matter. So at some point, if it just gets too high, um, then then that's something that is cause uh, also for concern. And then finally, there's this really interesting variant between people or ge genetic variant or whatever you want to call it, or how people react to saturated fat intake. Like uh, I'll use a couple personal examples. I eat, you know, I eat up to 12 egg yolks a day. Most of the meat that I eat is saturated fat. My LDL is always uh, under 100 my total cholesterol is borderline too low. Now, Doug uh, is somebody that, you know, obviously, you know, Doug, our producer, he reacts very differently to saturated fat, and he has mm -hmm. to actually control it a little bit because it can have some, what would look like adverse effects on his blood lipids. So it depends on the person as well. Um, now, my comment on that show was, just, was simply this, was when there's one blood marker, unless it's really bad, it doesn't tell you nearly as much as what the whole picture is, right? You got to look at mm -hmm. everything to kind of make more of an accurate assessment. And I think really good doctors who are experts in this field will tell you that. So that's what that's what I would look at. And I would talk to your doctor about those things. Do you think that uh, Dr. Ran and Dr. Todd would cover a subject like this inside our hormone? Uh, now, form? those are, they're hormone specialists. Um, now, they are, very knowledgeable, they are somewhat knowledgeable about, about cholesterol because it, it's something that can get affected. Uh, with hormones, so you could try asking them, but I would uh, I would speak specifically to somebody who's an expert um, in this field because there's a lot we're learning about this. Like I, like what I said earlier about different types of LDL, this was mm -hmm. barely discussed just like seven years ago. It was just LDL, and then we discovered, wow, there's smaller, denser particle LDL mm -hmm. molecules, and then there's mm -hmm. those that are Big larger and particles. fluffier, and one is more damaging, the other one tends to be more protective. LDL in general is associated with protecting you from infection and illness. So it's also essential. Um, so like having it too low isn't, isn't good from what I've read. Um, but it's, it, there's a lot of complexity to this and I would look at all of these things. So, 
Um, and I would talk to somebody who's an expert. Well, I, so I, that's why I was going to ask you then. If you if you were not to just defer to a general practitioner doctor, who would you defer to that maybe who we know that you think could be able to dive into his labs a lot better than – because that's the only – this is the problem with the, the GP right here, right? They see that and then yeah. their, their first thing right away is, oh, let's fix that. Let's get Let's get that lower – uh, you not- know, Doctor Stephen Cabral uh, has got some pretty good takes on mm-hmm. on cholesterol numbers, blood lipids, uh, the context of the whole thing, triglycerides. Right, that's something else you want to pay attention to. Um, he's somebody that's really good. Um, but I would bring these exact questions up to your doctor and say, okay, uh, what's the right ratio of HDL to LDL? I mm-hmm. would say, um, can I do a test to determine what kind of LDL? particles that I have to see what the difference is. And is my LDL Mm -hmm. so high that none of that matters? Or am I within the range where I can look at the whole context of things and and pay attention? It's a lot less clear, or I should say obvious than it used to be. You know, it used to be, oh, you know, over 200 cholesterol was really bad. And then we saw these long-term studies that showed that people with higher cholesterol in some cases live longer. Mm -hmm. People with higher LDL tend to get less infections. So my point is it's with, with what I said was, we used to look at like a single number and be like, oh, good or bad, but it's way more complex than that. Right. Wasn't the fear of, you know, potentially that leading to heart attacks and, and you know, sort of epigenetically unlocking, you know, some of these problems down the road. Is that still like something that's a very, you know, real fear that, uh, you know, doctors are. Yeah. And I, and I know LDL, if it gets too high, everything else, you know, the context of everything else can look whatever it wants and it still might not necessarily be a good thing. Um, but it's like I said, it's kind of, no, and it's, I've heard conflicting information yeah. about it now. So it's it, tough to, it's answer. really weird how some people react to saturated fat, uh, in terms of their lipid numbers. And how, I mean, I'm, I, I said, I'm a perfect example. I literally eat like a red meat probably twice a day, three times a day, egg yolks yeah. up the yin yang. I eat, I mean, a lot of my fat is saturated and my blood lipid numbers are almost too low. Like my cholesterol is almost too low hmm. so it's it's very interesting so that's so i would like i said i would ask an expert those questions specifically you know i like to, i know the ratio is a makes a big difference of hdl ldl then there's a ratio of those to your total your triglycerides you know play a role and then the type of ldl that you have i know all those things now right. are starting to show that they're you know that they i would important. just caution taking the you know if it's the general practitioner that he's talking to and 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 referring back to him i would just caution that uh, i don't know uh, his extent and and I, I think if you ask those questions you'll know like yeah. hey what are my ldl can i get a test that shows me what kind of ldl yeah, well, uh, I don't know. I don't think there is one. Like, then you know, okay, I might need to find someone that you know really looks a little deeper. At yeah, this. if I was back when I was training, I always had like a, a doctor that I knew because I, I had trained one, and then I'd keep them on on tabs because this is something I would defer. Right, I would. This is not my level of expertise, but I know enough and experienced enough where I've had healthy, really healthy clients still test high like this. So finding somebody that is more or that's well versed in this besides just their, because a lot of times they would come with their, from their recommendation from their doctor saying, Hey, my doctor says my cholesterol is too high. And they would just give me some number and say, that's all you were told. Nothing else. What about all these other markers? Well, okay, let me refer you over to my buddy over here. Yeah. Go get it ran and ask these questions and see. Yeah. Well, part of the problem, Sean, it was that, Mm -hmm. and this, this was from doctors that I trained. They actually told me this, that they said, you know, one of the issues is we invented a pharmaceutical drug that was so effective at lowering cholesterol. Like you take a statin and it will lower your cholesterol. Yeah. And so what happened was because we had something that was really effective, that was easy, you just take a pill, that they focused really hard on that because it was something so easy to yeah, treat. Yeah, everything became a nail. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. And um, and so that was, I guess, part of the issue. But we know now that it's a little bit more complex um, than that. So, I, and again, the genetic factor is huge, man. Some people are very, they have to really reduce saturated fat intake and they even have to, Reduce total fat intake. There's a small percentage of people that still mm-hmm. have to do that. Um, so it depends. So again, I would I would find I would go to your doctor and ask all these specific questions and see if if you get the answers you're looking for. And if not, then find somebody who, who yeah. Does those and things. if you're not following already, uh, Doctor Stephen Cabral, I think that's his Instagram too, right? Yeah, S T E P H 
I think Stephen with a PH. Yeah, Cabral. Okay, you said, I'm sorry, Stephen, is it Cabral? Yeah, yeah Stephen Cabral. C A B R A L. You could actually go okay, back. We did, it, we did an interview with him on here. So it was a really good interview. Yeah. I, we might have actually touched on cholesterol with him. I think we did. Yeah. I think we did touch on cholesterol with him. So that's a, that'd be a good episode to listen to, anyways. He's actually got a podcast too that it does really, really well. And I think he does like we do where we field questions. So he mm -hmm. would just, he would be a great follow uh, in general, I think, for, for these types of questions. Okay. Perfect. Right. And then what, what were the names of the other? There was a couple other doctors you guys had mentioned. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Did we mention more right now? For right, not right Dr. now. Dr. Ruscio, maybe? No, 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 no. no, no, no. We, didn't, we didn't recognize. Yeah, that's okay. Maybe, maybe it was medicine. just Cabral. Yeah. yeah I mean, um, we've, we have doctor friends for specific things like, you know, uh, Jolene Brighton and uh, also Dr. Ruscio and uh, but Stephen, Becky Dr. Campbell. Cabral would probably be. Yeah, we have like that we recommend for like gut health, you know, functional mm -hmm. medicine. So it kind of depends. But Cabral is uh, up your alley for what you're asking. Oh, right? Dr. Allo. He's also, he's a, he's a, uh, yeah, uh, he's, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a oh, cardiovascular right, right, specialist. Right. So, um, he was on a podcast as well, Doctor A A L O. I was I trying to think of him. Yeah, yeah he's also Agreed. somebody. Might want okay, to talk perfect. To. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I listen to this, I'll I'll remember what we said and then and then look those look those doctors up. So, um, yeah. Um, if we've got um just a couple more minutes here, I was just going to say, yeah, I kind of actually heard the same type of thing when I was reading um in Ben Greenfield's book Boundless. He actually had a section about that where he talked about some of the same thing, how it really comes down to the different types of LDL particles, and so it's, there's a lot more to it than just you know. HDL, LDL. Right. Um, and then I guess just one last question. So with the, um, you know, with the, the testing, you've talked about, um, Sal, a lot about how um, different body types, you know, different genetic types, we react differently to saturated fats. So can they test for that at a typical, you know, in a typical clinical setting? I don't think so. I think the way you know is you- By teasing it out. Yeah, you tease it out. Like I use Doug, Doug as an yeah. example. Him and I if we ate the same diet, our blood lipids would look very different. Um, so okay. I think that's really the only way at this point. Okay. All right. Thanks for calling, well, Sean. Yeah, I appreciate it very much, guys. Thank no you. Problem. Thank you. Yeah, gone are the days of just ah, cholesterol over two hundred is bad for you, and you know yeah. LDL is always bad. Well, I mean, it's God, way more. Lower than, it. Here's the medicine. Yeah, the, it's the way unfortunate more part complex. though is gone. The days are not gone. They're still getting general practitioners that still talk like this. Yeah, that that's all they say. Oh, it's high. Let's get it down. Yeah, here, take the statin. You know, yeah. or oh, we need to change your diet up right away. Versus looking at all the all the factors. So. You know, I find that I still get stuff like this, but I, I know damn well that I'm not an expert in this. Like, this is not my field of expertise, and I know there's such yeah, a is individual bio indiv individuality. Yeah, yeah. That's I a have hard word to say. I have a lot of fun with this because I'll when I get my blood work, when I used to, I don't do this anymore, but I used to have fun with it. And before I would get the results, doctor would test my blood, and I'd say, yeah, I'm interested in seeing what my my numbers look like I eat about 12 eggs a day and I eat probably one to two pounds of red meat every day. And the look on their face is always like, I, I suck on butter cubes. Yeah. They're always like, Oh my God. Like, Oh, this is going to be really bad. And then they get the numbers and they're like, uh, your cholesterol your total. Do you sweat mayonnaise. Yeah, your total cholesterol is 163 or whatever. Like, uh, this doesn't make any sense. You know? Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe.